Hey friends, and welcome to the end of summer garden tour. And if you're like, that doesn't look like a garden, that looks like a jungle, you're not going to be far off because by the end of summer, as we are on the cusp of fall, the garden very much turns into a jungle. But the good news is it is still producing a ton of food. In fact, this is one of my favorite times of years. It's also one of the most exhausting because we still have everything coming in out of the garden. But very shortly, that will change because we are probably close to two weeks away from probably our first frost, which means all the warm weather crops will then, they will totally be done. But for another few weeks, we are in kind of the glorious state where everything is still pumping out of the garden, despite it being a very overgrown. And I have literally done no maintenance, no weeding, like nothing in the garden for probably the past month, aside from harvesting a ton of bounty. And we are going to continue that today. So I thought I'd kind of give you like an updated tour, kind of end of the summer garden season. And we're just going to walk through it and start harvesting stuff. You ready? It's probably a little hard to tell, but here amongst the flowers, as well as calendula gone wild, we have quite a few of our pepper plants. So here, I've also got some black eyed Susans, but here you can see I've got pepper plants. Now these aren't very big yet. These are still pretty small. And because we have not hit, oh, I got a little bit of sun scald there. So I'll probably go ahead and pick that one and use it for something and dinner tonight. However, for the rest of these bad boys, I'm just going to continue to let those ripen. Same over here. I'm going to keep letting these guys grow and get a little bit bigger. And then I'll harvest all of these probably next week, right before, and keep an eye out for first frost warnings. But these guys, look at those beauties. Those babies are completely ready to pick. This is also one of my favorite times of year because we are finally not as hot. So we've got sun. We had a, quite a bit of rain last night and it's sunny out, but it's really only, I think the high right now, it says it's like 57 degrees out. So it's sunny, but it's very pleasant to be working. It's not too cold and everything is just coming on. This is like my favorite time. And it is not too hot to then take all of this bounty inside and start to preserve it. So the great thing about peppers is, of course, you get different flavor profiles as they ripen. And for hot peppers, the more red they get, then usually the hotter they are. However, you can still harvest them even when they're green. But for right now, I'm just going through and I'm going to harvest all of the red ones. And I think I'm going to go in and do some fermented hot sauce with these. I'll probably also end up freeze drying uh, what I don't ferment into hot sauce to then just throw in and use in dishes later. And, but I'm going to leave the green ones out here just because they will continue to ripen a little bit for me. No, oh, that one's not very any good. Those ones are all good, but you can also just dry them. So these are really super easy preserving. So I've got quite a few of red ones there, hot red ones. So those babies are going to go into a fermented sauce. And then these these are really fun. Look at these ones. Aren't those fun? These are not very hot. They're pretty, they're really good um, on the mild scale, but I've got a few of them have finally gotten red. So I'm going to pick those, but then I'm going to leave all of these green ones to just keep going. Look at these bad boys. So these are really fun. They start out as kind of this really dark purple. But then as they age, they get like this really deep dark red. Aren't those pretty? I'm really excited to try these. These are a uh, Sezek Black. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but it's C-Z-E-C-K. So this is a new pepper variety for me. I have not tried these guys before, but they're looking super fun. And then I've got these, which I'm pretty sure these are the Jimmy Nardellas. And it's also my first year growing these guys. 
full, full confession, some of my tags got a little messed up when we were seed starting. Didn't all make it out into the garden with the plants. So there's a couple of the pepper varieties that I'm like, um, not exactly sure what you are. So we're just going to do some tests to see if you're sweet, sweet or hot, and then we'll know. So we still have quite a bit of winter squash that's coming on, but you guys look at the size of those acorn squash. I mean, those babies are almost pumpkin size. So I'm super excited. Those I want to continue to ripen. Um, they have, are fully ripe and have their best flavor when the underneath side that is touching the ground, when that starts to turn orange and those are not orange yet. So I'm going to let those keep going. Now here, is my big long row of glorious Brussels sprouts. So you can see a little bit more wide shot here of the garden. So I've got Brussels sprouts here, but they are still pretty small. Like those aren't even close to being harvestable yet. Um, I've got some different varieties, but they're all still relatively pretty small. So those will keep on going through October, even to really the first part of November. So we'll see, this year has been really warm and dry. This was like our first rain really in a very long time. And so some of them have gotten a little bit stressed. Brussels sprouts don't really like a ton of heat. Now, normally here in the Pacific Northwest, our summers are cooler. They haven't been the past couple years. So we'll see what my lovely Brussels sprout harvest ends up being fully. And then here's the win rest of the winter squash patch. Well, some of the winter squash. So I've got a lot of delicata. And quite a few of these are getting close that I'll start to harvest these probably next week and get them set out to cure while we still have a little bit of sun and warmth. Most of the time I have to end up curing them though inside by the fireplace just because we're not warm enough this far north to fully cure them outdoors. But I like to let them go. Winter squash doesn't really ripen off the vine. So I let those stay on the vine as long as possible for maximum flavor got a couple more acorn squash happen here. Um, most of this though, I think I've got some spaghetti squash a little bit further down as well. Most of this is delicata because that's just our favorite winter squash. However, kind of funny story. You see also delicata that's growing up on the cucumber trellis. And that's because if you watched my video on how to direct sow seeds when it's really dry out, and using the board trick, which we'll link to that video if you haven't seen it, because it's fabulous, fabulous, works very well. I used that to replant because a lot of my cucumber seeds did not come up on the first planting. My package said cucumber seeds, friends. It said cucumber seeds. Let me tell you, that is not a cucumber. That is a delicata. So, Somebody failed at their job that day and put the delicata seeds in the cucumber package. They're not cucumbers, but luckily for us, I love delicata and they actually go really well on the trellis. So they're doing great. They vined up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten delicatas all growing on the trellis. So I'll let those just keep going. And I have a few very overripe cucumbers that I missed, but I don't really mind because there were a few cu cucumbers that came out from the first planting, but the rest is delicata, but see here, very overripe cucumber. This one is so overripe that I actually won't eat it because they tend to get a little bit bitter when they're this overripe. However, the chickens go crazy. So the chickens have been getting treats out of the garden where I have missed some or they've just gotten really overripe. So this I will actually take to the chicken coop and give it to them. But I was gonna show you the rest of this section of the garden. It's kind of a hodgepodge. Um, this is the cucumber trellis area, which I've got some overripe. So on the inside of the cucumber trellis, I also have planted tomatoes. And so these guys are about ready, ready to pick. They're not quite ripe, but they'll continue to ripen off the vine. In fact, ideally I would have picked these last night because we did have a rain but we're drying up now, sun's coming out. So I'm gonna let these just kind of dry off outside and then I'll come back and pick these tomatoes. Um, I've got quite a few green tomatoes still happening. So I just leave the tomatoes on until right before the first frost. And then I do harvest before the first frost though, because if you plan on canning any of your tomatoes and they're on the vine when it dies, 
it alters the pH too much to safely can them. Now I can pick them ripe when they're alive and on the vine and throw them in the freezer and that's fine. So I usually kind of make a game plan when first frost is coming, I come and get all of the tomatoes off the vine the night before to continue ripening indoors. I've got a video that shows you that too. Um, but as long as they've just started to turn and they have like a blush on them, you can go ahead, bring them in, and they'll continue to ripen and have full flavor. Now, green tomatoes, though, can also be preserved. And I don't know, there's quite a few good recipes that use green tomatoes as well. So even if I don't get all of my tomatoes right, because we never do if we're just too far north, not a loss. I'll put those green tomatoes to use as well. Now, I have to tell you, this is my new favorite variety of tomatoes. So this little beauty is a black strawberry tomato. And what's really cool um, is when it first forms, hold on, let me, let me get you over here a little closer in detail. So when these first come on, they're green on the underside here, and then they have like this black, pretty purple striping. But then they get quite, I mean, this is quite large. See, they get a lot larger. This starts to turn kind of a white color. And then when they're ripe, this part turns this lovely pink. So it kind of looks a little bit like a strawberry, uh, like a black, like a black strawberry. But what's really cool is they are very, very meaty. Like they have really good flavor. Okay. I'm going to show you. Mm. See there? It's very fleshy, really meaty, but it is packed with tomato flavor. I mean, it's different than like the golden cherry tomatoes because those are kind of sweeter and I just love to pop those in. But this is like a really full bodied tomato flavor, but like in a grape cherry or grape tomato size. It's really good. Now I'm also in the bean tunnel. I'm going to show you. You can kind of see all the way up here. It goes all the way over in arches, but the beans are pretty much at seed bean stage now but I'm going to let them dry out because we're not supposed to have rain again for a few days. And again, in a perfect world, I would have harvested this, these yesterday before it rained last night. But you can see these are fully developed. They've turned white. They're not a green bean anymore. The bean inside the pod, it's all lumpy, fully formed. So these will get shelled out. These will be our dried bean as well as our seed bean of the Tar Heel green beans. So I just always let these go until the end of the season. So for seed saving purposes, so that this seed is fully developed. So this will get harvested and it'll be the rest of the dried beans and the rest of the seed because I've already got, mm, what do I do? 40 something, 40 something jars of green beans I canned because I still had some left over from last year canned. So my goal is always to have us have one jar of green beans per week. So I always like to have 50, well, however many weeks are in a year and then a little bit extra because there's sometimes like I'll use two jars if I'm making a big green bean casserole, etc. So anyways, met my quota. So the rest of these just went to seed bean. But I've got a lot more happening over here. So we've got some fall lettuce that is just starting to come on through here. So let that continue to grow. And then look at my celery, you guys. I have got celery all the way down here. So I'm going to be starting to cut... Some of it I'll let to continue to go, but some of these larger stocks, these are ready to be harvested. So I will get those cut and I think I'm just going to freeze dry them. So I'm going to freeze dry the celery and I'll still let that going because it'll be fine until we hit frost. And then I was a little late on my pea harvest. <laughs> the peas are dead, completely died, but I've got some seed peas that I left in there on that vine. And then I've got a little bit still going on that far one that I need to get harvested as well. Those will also be seed for the peas. And then I've got more beans on that one. And then I've got beets in between the celery here where we sowed, I sowed beets because it was still sunny. And I've got more tomatoes happening there, more beets, more beets. This is my overgrown compost pile. Um, I've got a lot of lovely weeds that are happening over in that area. And at this point of the game, I'm like, I don't care. We will get those chopped down with the weed eater um, and get some mulch on that for the winter months to help take care of those. Yep, I've got some seeds that are happening in an ideal world. I would have gotten to those before they formed seed heads, but I didn't. But here, I've got all my carrot seed. So this, I will start harvesting these. This is carrot seed, as you can see there, all my carrot seed. 
Um, and a lot of these will just resell seed. In fact, there is carrots that are in there that have already self-sown. And then as they move into, this is um, a little bit further along, carrot seed. And there's a whole video on seed saving carrots if you're interested in how to do that. Step by step, we'll link to that. And then here I've got zucchini. So we've got zucchini through here as well as more carrots. So I've got quite a bit of carrot harvest that's all just kind of self-sown throughout here. So we'll be getting that. I leave the carrots in the ground, so I don't have to really about pulling those up. Do you, do you guys see the little black there? What you doing, kitty cat? You out hunting some mice? She thinks she's totally camouflaged. <laughs> but I also have spaghetti squash. So there is the spaghetti squash. It's kind of all sprawled out all the way over and through the corn. There is the corn harvest and it's almost ready to harvest. It needs like another week. Um, the ears, they're formed. They're just not super sweet yet. So I'm gonna let those go for one more week. And then here, this is the October bean tunnel. So there you can see the October beans and they are super close to harvest size. Um, in fact, quite a few of these are dry, almost dry. I'll let them go a little bit longer. I can feel they're a little bit still soft. These are when they're totally fresh. You can see how much more vibrant, aren't they pretty in color? And then as they age and continue to develop, then they end up looking like this with a really large, good bean inside. So those probably next week will get picked, let them develop a little bit more and then brought in. And then I've also got cabbage growing here. So that will continue to go all the way through for another two months. So that'll go for another two months and that will be our cabbage um, that I'll just leave until right before we start to get a lot of really hard frost and freezes. And then, oh, the tomato high tunnel. I'm just picking off of that. I probably have another two to three weeks if we don't get a frost of harvest left there. So busy time, but one of the things, oh, I left my basket in the garden. I'll have to go back for it. Take a walk with me, shall we? Um, is the grapes. So our grapes, because we were dry and warm, there's the basket. Um, so early this year, normally our grapes are ready right at our first frost, which is great because if grapes go through a frost, they are much sweeter. So if you have grapes and you've got a frost coming, leave them on the vine. They will taste even that much sweeter. However, there's a caveat to that, which is why I'm going to be picking grapes today. If the grapes are pretty much ripe and you are still about two to three weeks away from the first frost and you don't have your grape plants netted in order to keep little birdies out, they'll strip it. And they'll usually strip it within a week. So I am over here where the grapes are because I've been seeing the birds can you hear them? Yeah. They know that the grapes are on too. And so they will come in here and within a week they'll have it stripped. So here's our grapes. They are a green seedless. They are called interlochen is the variety and they are so good. So good. Mm. So, I'm going to be out here harvesting all the grapes so that we get them. I don't mind sharing a few with the birds. But they're not very good about leaving any for us. So, I'm going to come through, harvest all of our grapes. And then i got to decide what I'm going to do with them. The good thing about the grapes is they will stay in the fridge like the crisper drawer. I'll probably have too many for just that. Um, they'll stay there for a couple of weeks at least and be fine. But I think I'm going to freeze dry them. Because I'm like, ooh, little freeze-dried grapes as snacks. That just sounds wonderful. And, of course, you can dehydrate them and make raisins. And raisins are okay. But I think that I would like these better freeze-dried. I'm we'll probably just snack on them. Because we have enough jam and jelly that I don't really need to make any grape jelly. Mm. So those ones, this one, see how they're a little bit smaller? Those ones aren't quite ripe yet. I'm going to leave the smaller ones and make sure I'm just getting the larger ones that are nice and sweet, which is going to be these guys back here. 
and I can see that actually the birds have been in here because see this is not like full the birds have actually already been in here and stripping quite a few of these so it's a good thing we're out here to harvest them now So I think I need a bigger basket or a lot more bigger baskets because this was only the harvest off of the bottom left of the grapevines. We've got a lot more grapes to go. If you want to learn more about growing and preserving your food, I have got a ton of playlists and video tutorials for you to watch here.